Batting the designated hitter, number 31 from Jacksonville University, Brandon Dudley. I'm adding the second base, number 10 from St. John Fisher College, Ryan Simmons.
33 from Jacksonville University, Mason Nadoni. First Heritage Federal Credit Union brings you Kasasa. What's Kasasa? It's an easy way to earn up to 39 times more interest on your money that just might make you want to dance. ATM refunds, no monthly fees, outstanding local service, and way more interest than those mega banks. What are you waiting for? Switch to free Kasasa checking at First Heritage Federal Credit Union. Welcome those on Facebook. I apologize being late. They started this game a little early and I had another job up in Rochester so I had to drive back as soon as I could. Nice. Martinez grounds out, I'm sorry. Direct line is short as the rain is starting to come down heavy. I'm probably setting up for nothing here. As if the rain continues like this, I can't imagine they're gonna keep this game going. I'm batting the third base with the ball from Bucknell University, Brendan Lowry. So Lowry up. Welcome those watching from around the country, especially the St. John Fisher parents. <laughs> I know we've got several St. John Fisher players on these teams, on both teams. So quickly. Had a strike two to Lowry. Don't forget to give us a like, give us a share. Let other people know you're watching a Price Sports presentation on Facebook Live. And a quick one, two, three strikeout that time for to put Lowry down. I'm adding the catcher, number 33 from Norfolk State University. Nick Wimmers. So Wimmers up. That's in there for a strike. Five straight strikes, low and outside, one and one. Two outs here as we cruise along. Tip to stay alive to the back stop. Again, if you're just joining us, again, I apologize. The game 
moved up a half an hour and I had a job in Rochester I just got back from. Trying to get ahead of the rain. It was actually pouring in Rochester when I left there about an hour and a half ago. Chop down the third baseline for foul. Still one and two to Wimmers. Fans, who's your turnout ball balls that stay inside the stadium through the Dodger dugout? So good at bat so far. Two and two. Dodgers sporting a different uniform today. Get a close-up of it as soon as I can here. Another foul, so. Not the pitcher's best friend when you have a batter that just keeps fouling the ball out, just raising on the pitch count. Of course, it's only the first inning, so not that big of a concern at all, but. They really try to get out of any inning between 10 and 15 pitches. And this pitch count already up to eight <laughs> on this and Wimmers, so. Nine. <laughs> Player wants four more base of balls when he's after this pitch, I think. That's I tried to frame it that time, but full count. So 11 pitches in here. That's high, he walks him. <laughs> what a great at bat. Someone got, a little, out, someone got a little out of control with the chalk. <laughs> the machine exploded right there. Now Alfred State College product, Colin Johnson. Also grew up right down the road, Elman, New York. Which is literally, if I look to the left over the hill from this stadium. So a two out walk, puts a man on for Hornell and that one's high, so. Tipped away. For one and one. That's the first Heritage Credit Union 50 center. Kevin Higgins on deck if Johnson able to get on base. I don't think you're going to see Wimmers try stealing anything here. He might be going on the pitch, but. Another foul tip. One and two. If you're listening in the area, tomorrow's the Father's Day car show at Canicadilla Park, which is on your way to Almond, actually, on that back row there. So if you have a chance, bring your father out or just come and check out all the 200-plus cars we have on display there at the Father's Day car show at Canicadilla Park tomorrow. Starts at 9 a.m., runs till 2. Only a dollar to get in. You have chicken barbecue and plenty of food and entertainment going on as well. Sponsored by the Hornell Kiwanis Club, of which I'm the president. <laughs> two and two to Johnson. That's high. So the pinch count on the rise here. Yeah. 
and walks him. So after buzzing through the first batter, have a little bit of trouble here. Now batting the second base from the 14 from St. It's a second two out walk in a row. So Higgins does get a chance to bat here. Anything in the gaps I think would score Wimmers from second. Can the Olean Oilers and the Hornell Dodgers, both teams date back to the early 1900s. So this is a, one of the premier matchups of the year when these two teams get together. The history is just rich with these two teams. Ball gets away to advance the runners. Again, thanks for joining us. I'm Bob Peicher broadcasting from the Maple City Dodge broadcast booth. Don't forget to give us a like, give us a share, let other people know you're watching this game. All around the country, welcome those family and of the only in Oilers and Hornell Dodgers. Okay, we're gonna try to bring you as many home games as possible. I know we had some messages on Facebook, you know, wondering where some of the games went. I said I can't do them all. It's unfortunate, but um, I'm gonna try to do as many as possible. Just and I'm gonna put a list up there and a schedule. Uh, on Monday to let you know what games we're going to be doing so you guys can have a kind of a heads up. If you can't catch me, you can also catch it on the radio. If you go to the Dodgers, a strike. If you go to the Dodgers website, in the lower left-hand corner, you'll see a little tag or notification. You can press there, and it'll take you right to the radio broadcast. And I think it takes you to the home and away, so you can listen to the games on uh, the stream. There's a shot, and it's over the head. One, two runs home, and a double. Higgins puts the Dodgers up top. There's a, gonna give you a shot of the new Dodgers uniforms they have on today, or they're new to me anyways, I haven't seen them. So it all started with a two-out walk. Nobody on. He actually had back-to-back -back walks. And then that ball on a wild pitch got loose. And then a base hit, or double actually by Higgins, puts two runs on the board for the Dodgers. Again, if you're just joining us, I was, I did record it, but I wasn't online for the top of the first. So if you watch, if you go to Peich TV YouTube channel sometime early in the week, you'll see this game and you'll see the first inning, or the first top of the first on YouTube live as well as on Spectrum Cable channel 1301 on the replay. Like I said, this game scheduled for 7 o'clock, moved up till 6.30, but I already had a, Another job scheduled in Rochester, and as soon as that got over, I scooted home as I didn't speed. Hint, hint. <laughs> Let's see, I passed a lot of cars. <laughs> and it was pouring in Rochester. Now starting to rain here as they try to get this game in, as Hornell already had a doubleheader against Syracuse on Thursday that was postponed. Holding an umbrella is, I'm actually under the stadium roof here, but it's, the roof's so high that any kind of wind brings the rain right in. That's foul tip to stay alive. So, not sure of the exact pitch count. I'll try to get it from um, one of the Dodger players up here is holding a radar gun, and I think he's also keeping keeping pitch stats as well. So, but a high count. Wimmers alone had, a, had 12 pitches thrown to him. 
another chop foul. That's what's happening here is they just, and it's one of those things you see all the time that it doesn't matter what you throw and how good your pitch is and how you're painting those corners, the batters always seem to find a way. And yet, I was watching a Mets game the other day and it happened to Syndergaard, it happened to uh, 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 DeGrom, I mean, and they just get kind of frustrated. It's like, what do I have to do here? They're throwing 98 miles and just painting the corners and they're still getting foul tips. And it happens sometimes, so it's, it's exactly what's happening here today. Another, just a foul tip again. The balls are taking abuse. If I had someone doing stats, I'd really like to know how many foul tips there's been or hits there's been. Another foul. <laughs> that sounded like a broken bat, but. <laughs> yeah, and this is the second time the umpire has requested balls. Refresh his pocket. There's a shot, it should end the first inning finally, but Hornell able to bring two runs home. They take the lead two to one. We go to the second after this. Today's game brought to you by the Ryan Agencies, Hornell, Jasper, and Wellsville. Call 324-7500 to stop in at 57 Broadway. Insurance protection you can rely on the Ryan Agencies in Hornell. And by Remax Home Tells Choice, 117 Main Street, Hornell. Reggie Gambino, Martha Marino, a household name. Call 697-3629 or call their own personal cell phones that are also listed there. Remax, hometown choice. Triple C's Tasty Freeze located on Park Drive in Hornell. Stop in and get all favorite burger, white or red hots, chicken fingers, best onion rings in town. Also, tons of flavors of your favorite Perry's ice cream. John N. Dagan, attorney at law, general and trial practice, probably serving the Southern Tier since 1989. Call 324-6690. John and Dagan, 29 Church Street, and of course Maple City Dodge Airport Road in Hornell. Great sales, great service on all Dodge Chrysler Jeep. Check out their used cars on the lot as well. And also we get a quickie oil and lube change as well at Maple City, Dry or Maple City Dodge. Need a plumber? Call Palmer. Mike Palmer, plumbing, heating, air conditioning, coal service, State Route 36 and Canada Steel. Call 698-4444. Need a plumber? Call Palmer. Mike Palmer. Okay, we go to the top of the second on the mound, as we didn't mention earlier, is Hornell's Jake Dunn. And then when I say Hornell, it's also Hornell graduate Jake Dunn, Finger Lakes Community College. Hornell's got, Hornell High School has three players on the Dodger roster. Spencer Wyand, who goes to St. John Fisher. Of course, Jake Dunn, Finger Lakes Community College. And Jack Henby, who's playing right field, goes to Alfred State College as well, so Cornell being represented as there's a strike by Dunn. And like I said, some other local products. Johnson, we mentioned from Alfred Almond High School, which is right up the road as well, Alfred State College. Also got Brody Burdett, who hit him, who has moved here to Hornell, so his family lives in Hornell, but he did not graduate from Hornell. His brother actually pitches for the Hornell High School Red Raiders as a 10th grader. And Okay. Had a great success through a no hitter this year for the Red Raiders and had a one hitter game and also a two hitting hit game as well. So Dunn plunks a man. <laughs> I never I haven't heard that word in a while, plunks. Uh, there's a bunt. And he's safe. That's a beautiful bunt that time. Not much you can do. Number 
I'm betting the shortstop number two from Fairleigh Dickinson University, Nate Rush. So Nate Rush from Fairleigh Dickinson. They've been to that college before. Or have actually been by it, I shouldn't say. I've actually turned around in the front entrance to that college. And foul tips back for a strike. Two one Hornell, the Hornell Dodgers over the only in Oilers. Dunn steps off for a second. You can see him cleaning his cleats there a couple times as we have had some rain here. Now it's seemed to have let up just a little bit. It is misting. Another bun attempt foul. Live from Maple City Park on the campus of Hornell Senior High School. One of the best fields in the league. Especially that belongs to a high school. Like you said, if you're joining us from out of state, don't know much about the Hornell Dodgers, or like I said, a rich history. Don Zimmer played here, remember him? He just passed away a few years back, played for the Yankees, and Maury Wills, big name here. Tim Hudson, the longtime pitcher for the Atlanta Braves, and he kind of trickled around for like a 15-year career. Dallas Braden, who threw a perfect game, what, in 2012, I think it was, played for the Dodgers, as well as Rajay Davis, who plays for the New York Mets currently, played here as well. Rajay, been in the major leagues for 14 years. I think he's got sent back down to Syracuse, but his first at bat when he was brought up to the Mets this year hit a home run. No, no chance for two. Good recognition that time, no sense in chancing it. Runners advance to second and third. The first out. So Dylan Vincent, the center fielder, up. as he fouls that one off. Had an interesting conversation with a local gentleman here who made it to AAA out of Hornell. We were talking about pitching and, and hitting and stuff. He was a, a second baseman, and, but he was talking about how major leagues really like the northern arms. And what I say is that is, you know, these players from high schools in New York and Pennsylvania, teams that really don't practice a lot in the winter just because their arms aren't, what do I say, what I want to say, used. <laughs> and I guess it made a lot of sense to me. I really didn't realize that, that, uh, you know, when you're playing down and living in Florida and in the warm states that you're pitching all year round, that you know your arms are you're thrown every single day with them where if you live up here you're not and they're more fresh I, I just thought that was interesting Ooh, there's a shot and that's a home run a three run homer you, I could tell that the way that was hit that was going to be trouble so Dunn gives up a three run homer Make it four to two only in. So Vincent. Comes 
back with a strike. I think Dunn's pitched long enough to know now they can't let that bother him. Said even the best pitchers give up home runs and have bad innings or whatever. I mean, he's not having a bad inning, but not giving up three runs in an inning is not the best either. <laughs> but uh, it happens. Every pitch is a new battle. Try to win every pitch. In the comment section, give us a comment. Let us know where you're watching from. It's pretty neat. Uh, I've been doing this for 30 years. Obviously, this is only my second year, well, third year actually streaming. And it's amazing that we can bring a sport from a little city like Hornell all around the world. Or it used to take a crew of 50 to bring you a signal, see the satellite and stuff like that. It's just amazing technology is today. Obviously, we only have one camera. Baseball needs several cameras to make it perfect, but. Here's strike three for the second out. So after giving up a three-run homer, Dunn comes right back in with a strikeout. Come back to right fielder number 22, Jacob Victor. So right fielder Jacob Victor. And I've done enough of these games over the years. Even a six-run lead means nothing. Teams, you know, battle, you know, games just, like I said, any kind of run lead, unless it's like a 10-run leader. Of course, now they have a 10-run rule after the, the seventh inning. It's one of the new rules they have this year. As well as there's only one extra inning as well, so if you didn't know that, after nine, if the game is tied, they play a 10th inning, and if it's still tied, it uh, ends in a tie, and you get one point for a tie, both teams. If you get a win, it's two points, so it's a kind of a point system. Nice play over to third and over to first, so that's that. It's going to take us to the bottom of the second. Today's game brought to you by the Wine, or I'm sorry, Wine Cow Practice Associates, 20 Park Drive in Hornell. Get well and stay well with a visit to Dr. John Wine, Dr. Joseph McKay. Call 324-7246 for appointment, 324-7246. And Connors and Ferris, your workers' comp attorneys, offices in Buffalo and Rochester, proud supporters of the Bills, the Sabres, and your Hornell Dodgers. Call 585-262-COMP. That's 585-262-COMP. First Heritage Federal Credit Union opened up their newest branch on the corners of Mays and Seneca Street right here in Hornell. Actually, it's right next to the ballpark down the road a little bit. More than just checking and saving, stop into First Heritage today. And Airtight of New York, spray foam insulation, commercial residential, new and old construction. Airtightofnewyork.com, 368-2842. And Poulos and Roselle, Tim Roselle, Bill Poulos, attorneys at law, call 324-7333. Stop it at the Crossroads Professional Building. Poulos and Roselle, LLP. Elderwood at Hornell, one Bethesda Drive, long-term care facility, short-term rehab, beautiful facilities, free Wi-Fi, spacious rooms, beautiful garden, Elderwood at Hornell. And Rustic Lux, 320 Cannon Steel Street. Want that special furniture that you really don't like anymore, brought back to life, bring it in into Rustic Lux. Check out their showroom, the used furniture as well. Right and Gillio's Plumbing and Heating, college. Cooling, call 382 0836 Gillios Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. 24-hour uh, day service, Gillios. And, of course, Jack Henby, we talked about him. Up now, bottom of the second. Henby from Hornell, New York, Alfred State College. And he pokes one. Shouldn't be any trouble. And one pitch, one out as Henby's down. He's running all the bases no matter what for a little exercise. There he is. <laughs> uh, 
Here's Brody Burnett, another Hornell resident. ahead on two. And Burdett chases one low and toss down to first for the completion. Second out. So four pitches. I'm sorry, three pitches, two outs. Tucker Holden. So Tucker Holden. Try to get something going here. Two outs, bottom of the second. And that one takes a little weird bounce and it's gonna get through as I, I don't I wouldn't know how to score that, tell you the truth. I think he was gonna beat it out anyway, so we're gonna give him a base hit. And that's what the official scorer does as well, base hit. I thought, yeah, he was going to beat that down anyways. And it's not an easy play. So top of the order for the Dodgers as Martinez is up. Strike. Lowry on deck if Martinez is able to get on. Hornell's had success before with two outs. The first bottom of the first, Hornell scored two runs and came to the plate with two outs, nobody on. And able to score two runs on it after two walks. A pass ball and then a double. So we'll see if Hornell can put something like that together again. That ball's loose. So runners are going to get to first and second. <laughs> <laughs> that was just, that's one of those things as a pitcher, you're like, oh boy. When he sees that, and I think he might have pulled a muscle. I, no, I guess he's all right. I saw him reaching his back like that was an awkward try. When you try to reach back like that, and you can see him going, hey, sorry about that. <laughs> Lowry. So Lowry does get a chance to the plate. So runners on second and third, two outs. Where have I seen this before? Lowry takes a hefty swing at that one. Hefty, hefty, hefty. One bad, one bad, one out. That one's high, one and one. Again, runners on second and third, two outs. Second inning in a row where Hornell's had two outs, nobody on, and runners on second and third, and they do it again. That's high, two and one. Nick Wimmers on deck. Oh, 
looked like it was just inside, but home plate umpire sees things differently. Two and two, two outs, two men on. He's got to protect the two strikes here, you would think. And it was too late. Strikes him out, yeah. I, 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 just a, yeah, what are you going to do? <laughs> so you want to review your insurance and see if you're getting the best deal. You could call that big brand insurance company, but the big name company can only provide one thing, what they're locked into selling you. But the Ryan Agency is your local independent agency offering options from many top insurance companies. Insurance protection you can rely on. The Ryan Agency. play. So I'm a little short I'm behind getting that, but great play by Lowry. He's played that third base very well this year so far. Him and Martinez you see in there in the frame as well playing short has done an excellent job. So this is Ryan Simmons from Farmington, New York. He's a senior at St. John Fisher. Another, like we talked about, and there's a shot. And a home run. So the second home run of the game given up by Dunn. I guess the good thing about that, it was a solo shot. if you're a Dodger fan. Extends the Oilers lead to five to two. So this is Mason Deloney, Nud only, I'm sorry. Swings through that one for strike one. He's from Minnetonka, Minnesota. That name should sound familiar if you're a Prince fan in the movie Purple Rain. Remember he made his girlfriend purify herself in the waters of Lake Minnetonka. Uh, I didn't realize it was the name of a town. He's a red shirt freshman at Jacksonville University. He goes down on strikes for a strikeout. Catcher, number 30, Kevin Mooney. So Dunn doing a good job at least shaking off those home runs. <laughs> I'm sure he would rather not give up the home runs, but. This is Kevin Mooney from Williamsburg, Virginia. He goes to Randolph-Macon College. He's a junior, six foot, 200 pounder. So two and one. I'm sorry, it's three and one. And that one catches him for a strike two. Oh, 
Wait. Oh, he caught it in the box. Okay. That was like, yep, that did shop. <laughs> that was a little bizarre. Hmm. out at second, so Dunn gives up another homer to make it five to four, or five to two. He's going to take us to the bottom of the third. Stop down today and see why people drive for miles to come do business with us here in Maple City Dodge. We were looking all over for a tape and couldn't find what we wanted. We stopped at Maple City Dodge, found exactly what we were looking for at the price that we wanted. Come on in to Maple City Dodge, where we'll find you the right car at the right price. And I'll guarantee that. Catcher number 33, Nick Wimmer. So Nick Wimmer's up. Oregonia, Ohio, Norfolk State. Takes strike one. Wimmers, base hits. Just squeaked through the third and short stop there. So Wimmers gets on to lead things off here at the bottom of the third. So Colin Johnson up. Failed to mention Nathan Holt is the pitcher for Ole, and he's from Shippensburg, Pennsylvania. He goes to Pennsylvania College of Technology. He's a six foot three right-hander. Here's a nice pitch for a strike. Golf's that one foul. Come on, 
Colin Johnson calls for time here. And the Olean Oilers and Hornell Dodgers from Maple City Park. There's, should be an easy out. And just a lazy throw in. Now, he, he was gonna, I shouldn't say lazy. He had really no play anyways. He was, you can see where he, he was way back by that car. So there was no way he was gonna throw out Wimmers anyways. Now batting the second baseman, number 14, Kevin Higgins. So Higgins, St. Bonaventure. And from those around the country, if you've heard of St. Bonaventure, the Atlantic 10, it's located about 50 miles from Hornell to the west. Leads out again. Like I said, here we've had some rain. They have covers for the pitcher's mound and home plate, but it started to rain after the game had started, obviously. So I'll talk about this after this play here, after this pitch. Here's a ball. The dirt that's on the infield is called beam clay. It's really nice because it, when the when the wind kicks up, you don't have that dust flying around and stuff there. It's a, I guess it's from down south. Hornell had it shipped up here when they built it. It's called beam clay. It's very nice. The only reason I know that is because I happen to be doing a game, a high school game this year, and every time the wind or somebody was running or something, the dust just kicked up, and I'm like, it doesn't happen in Hornell. So I was able to talk to a graduate of mine who works here at the school, and he told me what kind of clay it is and how they maintain it. I think every school should have this because you just don't have it. was a disaster. I mean, everything was just coated in dust and dirt after that game, and we weren't even in the line of fire. And I, when I say that, the wind wasn't even blowing toward us, and we were still, I was still cleaning stuff off after that game. So it's called beam clay. Look it up. So a walk. Now uh, Josh Laurie from another Alfred State product. From Leroy O'Acton Knights, the high school, which is about 45 minutes from here, maybe a little longer. Hornell plays them pretty much every year in baseball. So familiar with this field. Oh, they don't, we didn't play them this year, though, I don't think. No, we did. I don't remember them playing this year. Lori pops one up a little too easy. Uh, batting the right fielder, number six, Jack Henby. So Alfred State's Jack Henby and Hornell's Jack Henby. Up. Henby, and it should be an easy out. Forced to second. So Hornell threatens, but no dice. It's going to take us to the fourth. 
fans, we have had a cell phone turned into the press box. If you're missing your cell phone, please come up the press box. Someone lost their cell phone. Fans, Mr. DeSanto and our Dodger pitchers, Andrew and Dakota, are traveling through the grandstand selling 50 50. So they're selling 50 50. So if you like some, please get their attention. If you want to zoom down here, if you're in the area, and buy a 50-50. Uh, stop in for a hot dog, hamburgers, you got everything here. The concession stand's open, slushy. Uh, we got nachos, let's zoom in. We got someone with nachos right there. There he is. Let's see if he offers any to the cameraman. Shaking hands, maybe offering some to a no. There's the fans we have today. Not too bad for a Saturday night. Of course, we got that's just a few pe a few of the people. A lot of people sit down, and I can't film it from here because there's a big pole in the way, but right down the third baseline. Jake Dunn continues his work on the mound here. And forward for the Oilers to shortstop number two, Nate Rush. So Nate Rush from Wheeling, West Virginia. One of my good friends used to work at the college in Wheeling. He goes to Fairleigh Dickinson. So top of the fourth finds Hornell down five to two. Olean scoring five runs on five hits. Hornell two runs on three hits. Only one error committed in this game and that was by Olean. There's a shot, should be an easy, what do they call that, can of corn? And just reminding those watching from the Hornet area, tomorrow is Father's Day car show at the Canicadia Park. 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Bring your father up or yourself up. Always a great time, plenty of food and vendors up there. Over 200 cars on display. And thousands of people through the door. We usually average anywhere from 2,500 to 3,000 people. And the good thing is the weather's supposed to break a little bit, so we're not, we're, it doesn't sound like we're going to have the rain we thought we were going to have. I think we're going to get hit by rain, but it's going to be tonight and be clear by tomorrow morning, which would be a godsend because I've got to go up at 7 o'clock and set up the tent, 7 a.m. There's a base hit. Gonna send him to two. And an easy advancement for a double. So Dunn's been hit today, that's for sure. He's given up two, he gave up a three run homer and a solo homer. Three run homer came in the top of the second. the first base, number 12, Noah Weiner. And then the end of it, the solo homer at the top of the third. He was able to come right back and strike out the next batter, which is good. And it limited the damage here, but he's got a man on second with nobody out. Yeah, 
This is Noah Weiner from Murraysville, Pennsylvania, sophomore at Ohio University. Three straight balls finds Dunn behind 3-0. and As nightfall is starting to creep in. Only hope the rain stays away so we can finish this game as he pitches a... a Four-pitch walk to Weiner, or Weiner, not how you say his last name. Six foot three. So runners on first and second, nobody out now. And heading could be a big inning for the Oilers. There's a base hit. Are they going to test? Oh, they, yeah. Once Henby bobbled it, I think if Henby closed the gap a little cleaner or quicker and had a clean pickup, you might have had a chance at the plate with his arm. He has shown it time and time again that he's able to gun down, gun down guys at the plate. But, so three straight. Uh, or I'm sorry, not three straight, but a hit that time. Drives one run home to make it six to two. Still nobody out. But that should be an out as second baseman. Do you see it? Yep. So done. Happy to get that out. Higgins okay, able to call off first baseman. Should be a double play. Yeah, no, it doesn't need to be a double play. I apologize. I didn't have any outs listed, but I know there was at least one. So you hear the PA announcer, two hits, one run. Six to two. If you get hurt at work, you want to be able to turn to a professional you can trust. Someone on your side, with the experience to tell you exactly how things will go. Helping you get your life back together. If you get hurt at work, call 262-COMP today and get the results you deserve. Connors and Ferris, your workers' comp attorneys. So bottom of the fourth, 6-2 Olean. And Burdett strokes one for a base hit to get things going. Something like a one-pitch hit to get your juices flowing. Matt Martinez up from Katy, Texas, Oklahoma Wesleyan. That's where he goes to college, playing shortstop. He's a switch hitter, so. Can do damage both ways at the plate. Throw is right though, he's 5'11", 155 pounder. He's one of those dangerous speedy types that get him on base and a real threat to advance as he foul tips off the bunt attempt. Again, a misty Saturday night here in Hornell, New York. If you're watching, not familiar where Hornell is, we're an hour south of Rochester hour and a half from Buffalo, about two hours from Syracuse. We're kind of in the 
center of everything here. Three hours from Cleveland, four hours from New York City. In the cradle of the Canisteel Valley. Try to frame that, frame that pitch that time. Ball one, one and one. So nobody out here. This is Tucker Holden from Lindsay, Oklahoma. I think I screwed something up when I was announcing players, but Martinez is on deck. There's strike three for the first out. Betting the shortstop for two, Matt Martinez. Ball one. a shot. Let's see. Oh. I thought it would have had a chance maybe in the gap, but popped it up just a little too far. Martinez dead. So the second out. Brendan Lowry from Randolph, New York goes to Bucknell University. Another one popped up, should be an easy play. So Olean works around a leadoff first pitch hit. Put three down. And we go to the fifth. Dodgers two. Six to two on the John and Dagan Sporver Connors and Ferris. Your workers comp attorneys offices in Buffalo and Rochester. Proud supporters of the Bills, the Sabres, and your Hornell Red Raiders. All 585-262 comp. First Heritage Federal Credit Union office in our newest branch in Hornell. More than just checking in savings, stop into First Heritage today. Airtight of New York. Airtight Spray foam insulation, commercial residential, new and old construction. Call 368 2842. Airtight of New York.com. Pulos and Roselle. Tim Roselle, Bill Pulos. Call 324 7333. Office is located in the Crossroads Professional Building on Main Street in Hornell. Pulos and Roselle. Elderwood, one Bethesda Drive. Elderwood and Hornell, that is, one Bethesda Drive. Beautiful facility, long-term care facility, short-term rehab. 
Stop in, take a tour of Elderwood today across from the Wegmans Walmart Plaza. Rustic Lux, 320 Cannon Steel Street, Hornell. Need that piece of furniture that you want re-loved and re-brought back to life? Bring it into Rustic Lux. Gilio's Plumbing, Heating and Cooling, 382-0836. Chad Gilio, on advertiser here with us. Thank you very much for your support. So top of the fifth, we have a new pitcher coming in. Gatan Sinsengale. I don't know if I'm saying this right. Sinisgale. <laughs> they said it and I didn't listen to the announcer. I think he's probably right and I'm not, but where is he from? He goes to West Liberty University and from Barnesville, Ohio. Six foot three, two hundred pound pitcher. Kicking off the dirt. Wonder how come they don't have, well, maybe it's dangerous, but one of those spike cleaners. So this is Mason Nadonli. The one we were talking about from Minnetonka, Minnesota. Purifying himself in the waters of Lake Minnetonka. Goes to Jacksonville University, the redshirt freshman. One and one. Fouled out of play. Of course, six runs by Olean on seven hits. Cornell, two runs on four hits. Cornell's runs coming in the Cornell's runs coming in the bottom of the first. There's a shot. And right there. Easy play for the left fielder. It's the one out. It's funny, the rain has been it's coming down, and then it stops. Right now it's just a light mist. It was just a little bit heavier a minute ago, and now it stops again. It's been doing that on and off all night. Here's a nice pitch. That's popped up. Gatan, how do you say his first name? Gatan pulls the out. How about the left fielder number 27, Tyler Phillips? So Tyler Phillips from Cheektowaga goes to SUNY Fredonia. SUNY is the State University of New York, for those that don't know. New York, that's New York's state system. Can anyone guess what the state system for New Jersey is? It's a name you've heard a lot, but probably didn't realize it was their state system. It's Rutgers. Rutgers has several campuses throughout the state, and that's their state college. Of course, they have a main campus and Cornell High School graduate this year, Rayon Buell, got a full scholarship to play football for Rutgers. They play in the Big Ten. Of course, Big Ten has Ohio State, Michigan, Penn State, 
Maryland. Of course, Northwestern. Ooh, nice pitch. Iowa. Illinois. See who I'm missing. <laughs> got hits and the state universities of Pennsylvania is Pitts of course you know Pitt University in, in Pittsburgh is that's where Dan Marino graduated from division one that's their state system so two outs and man on first now Nate Rush. In from Wheeling, he goes to West or Fairleigh Dickinson University. There's a pop fly. It's going to be tough for anyone to get to. You can see the base or the uh, down the line dimension is 305. We've seen a couple of home runs hit there this year. In fact, the last game we did the ball, that's the highway that runs through Hornell, the four lane. And, uh, it's actually kind of dead tonight. <laughs> There's a car. And the ball made it all the way across there in one of the last games. There's the runners going. Wimmers doesn't even attempt to throw out with, a, with two outs. the outs it always amazes me that a pitcher can throw strikes right in a target pitch after pitch when they but when they try to throw it to first base sometimes it's a little bit wild <laughs> if you get hurt at work call 262 comp today and get the results you deserve Connors and Ferris your workers comp attorneys Nick Wimmers. So Nick Wimmers leads things off here. Bottom of the fifth. Say hi to Matt McEnany out there in viewing land. That one brings some beam, beam clay up with it. <laughs> Say hi to Paul Nolan watching from Glenside, Pennsylvania. Not sure where Glenside is. You want to give us a shout back? Let us know where Glenside, Pennsylvania is. Hornell sits about 16 miles from the Pennsylvania border. Maybe a little bit further than that, but not much. So Hornell he should be taking every pitch here, don't? Especially when it's 2-0. and oh. Let him throw the first strike. And oh, and he tries again. That's going to be a base hit. That's really a mistake by the pitcher there. He, he, you know, I know he, your inclination is to go after that ball, but you know, let your shortstop or third baseman come in and make a clean play of it, try to make a clean play of it, because he dove for the ball and uh, you know, didn't allow the third baseman to come in and <laughs> have a chance at it. And I think he, well, was, I think he was going to, you got to give him a hit on that anyways. It's not an error, but. So again, a second inning in a row, Hornell gets a leadoff hit as Colin Johnson, Alfred Elman product, comes, from the, comes to the plate. So 
Johnson sees a ball whiz by him for a strike. Should be two, but unable to, had to get himself in it. And that's a tough play too. Let's see if they do give him an error. And that's what been my first guess too, but. So it goes down on the books as E5. So Hornell, chance here. So Kevin Higgins, the second baseman. Again, I'd be taking all the way here. First pitch. And that one's high, so. He's really had his control pit, uh, problems today and Hornell's bailed him out by swinging at balls that have just been in the dirt. Stuff like that, you got when it when a guy when a pitcher has control problems, it, it really as a coach should be talking to his his batters here and say, you know, you've got to be taking these pitches like that one. That was a little bit outside. Low. I think that would have been low and outside. He swings at it for for strike one. You know, let him throw the first strike in this. Any time a batter's struggling, I think that's important. You just don't want to be hacking it, you know, and, and giving the pitcher an advantage. Or bailing him out, rather. Base hits. One run home. And an overthrow. And this could hurt him. No, it doesn't. Because he slid into, Colin Johnson slid into third. So it really put him at a bad position to get up and start running again. You know, that, there was nobody backing up third there. Kind of a misplay by Olean as two runs come home. Wow, really a big mistake by Olean that time by not backing up third. That, that, sec, that second run home by Johnson wouldn't have counted or wouldn't even had a chance. Johnson wouldn't even have run, to tell you the truth. He would have been safe at third, so Hornell, with nobody else, nobody else now scores Two runs, and like I was saying earlier, it doesn't matter what the score is. I've seen six runs erased in an inning. You know, it just happens in this league. And that's one thing I've noticed this league is really batter heavy. Pitching's at a premium. I haven't seen any ex really dominant pitcher yet. In the, in the games we've streamed. Hence the high scoring. Ornell scored 17 runs in the game this year already. I, here's where I have to watch. I'm kind of exposed here and I, I got hit by a ball two games ago right in the arm, and I'm standing right behind my camera. I'm glad it hit me instead of my $4,000 camera. <laughs> I'll show you how I'm exposed here. And it's actually the, I've, or the, this is the first year I've done it from this angle. But you can see the netting is pulled back right there. It extends all the way down, obviously, and it's the worst kind of netting they could have bought. And <laughs> should have bought in the thinner. Fans have to look through this heavy netting, and there is a lot better netting. It would have cost a few hundred dollars more to get. One and one. It's high and outside, like I said, just keep being patient here. You hear somebody, Hornell Dodgers say, throw it harder, and that looks like an issue there. He's trying to really force this ball in there. Sometimes the pitchers forget about they got 
seven guys behind him there that are in the field to help him out. You don't have to be afraid of a batter making contact. It's two and two, nice pitch that time. Nobody out, two runs home here, bottom of the fifth. And Bob Pleischer broadcasting from the Maple City Dodge broadcast booth. Set a nice crowd here today for a Saturday night game here in the Maple City. There's a base hit. It's going to score another run. So Hornell closes the gap. <laughs> kind of take that back. I guess you do have to worry about letting the batter make contact, especially if they're going to poke it through the holes like that. That's the second hit Hornell has laid down that's just squeaked between the third and shortstop. So Jack Henby from Hornell up. Cornell High School as well as Alfred State College. Played for the Dodgers last year. Really struggled at the plate starting things off. All, awesome, in the, awesome in the outfield. And he's picked up his bat and he was the leading, uh, had the leading average on the Dodgers. Coming into the game. I don't have that stat in front of me. I think he was batting 328, which is pretty impressive here. He's really honed his skills playing at Alfred State. He's now a four year count. He used to be a junior count, what they call Juco. And Alfred has turned into a four year college, part of the SUNY program, State University of New York program. He's another one, probably just gonna be patient. Let pitcher throw the first strike. Ball three. So I can't imagine this is going to go much further without the head coach coming out for a visit. If he happens to walk Henby, we're now already scoring two, three runs here in the bottom of the fifth. Still nobody out, runner on first. There's a strike. See, that time he takes something off it and throws it right down the middle. See, they're waving the flag out there in right field. And that one. Hustle. Nice catch. Did he catch it? No, he didn't. So it'll go down as a foul. I thought he had that, but he scooped. I don't know what happened there. Exactly. It's hard to tell looking through a viewfinder. <laughs> well, I, I have a chance to watch the replay because I, when I say I have a replay, I can't show it to you guys, but I'm watching the stream just like you are on my computer 
and there's 11 second delay. So when you hear me, I actually said that 11 sec seconds ago in Hornell. <laughs> Full count to Henby. See if he protects anything close. That one's pro that one's dr oh, almost directly up in the air. And there's the out. So Henby, good at bat that time, but. I'm batting the first baseman, number 20, Brody Burdett. So one Hornell resident to another Brody Burdett up now. Base hit as the runner was going on contact. The runner was going stealing anyway, I should say. It's one of the neat advantages from filming from this area, as you can see what happens from first base, and he was heading down to second upon the pitch release. So puts runners on the corners, and like I said, I knew you were probably going to see a change at pitching here eventually. I think that's the idea. Is that what they're going to do here? Pitcher comes in. It's number nine, Alec. Let's see how you say his last name. Alec Tesca from Cato, New York. He's a junior at St. John Fisher. We'll stay right on him. The Ryan Agency. For all your insurance needs. Some insurance types work for just one company and can't offer choice. But the Ryan Agency is your local independent agency offering options from many top insurance companies. Declare your insurance independence. Insurance protection you can rely on. The Ryan Agency. So three runs home here, bottom of the fifth, two on. Tips that one off. Knew a wasted opportunity there. <clears throat> so 0 and 2. One out, two on. That one's low and inside. 
Kim Warfo watching from Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs> like I've had, had that question before. I don't think you call it tuning in anymore. What do you type in or pr press the button in? <laughs> I'm not sure how you'd say. Welcome to our stream. That was it's two and two. One out, three runs home here again if you're just joining us. Six to five, only in full count. Gary Nicolo Jack, Kathy Colucci joining us as well. Full count. Dodgers sporting a new uniform today. They're not throwbacks. <laughs> That one's low, and he walks the bases loaded with one out. So Martinez, the shortstop up, always a threat. Abetting the shortstop number two, Matt Martinez. Bases loaded, one out. Three runs already home here in the bottom of the fifth. Martinez swings for the cheap seats for strike one. Play, and that was going to be a ball. And like I said, I think they've got to be Martinez. I think that first pitch was going to be a strike, anyways, but. Foul tip to stay alive. Oh and two. Cornell really love to see a base hit here. And a base clearing double. <laughs> That's just outside. Good eye that time by Martinez. Fastball tailing out. That's a hard pitch to lay off of because it starts right down the middle and then curtails to the outside of the oh, timeout here. You control the pace, kiddo. That could be an easy out, and it is. There's a lot of room you'll see here in foul territory on both sides. So anything popped up, there's a good chance of being caught. So Lowry comes up. Thank you. 
foul tip. Held up with that ball. Crosses the strike zone. He asked, he said, was that ball down the middle? He goes, yep. You don't see many arguments, oh, you don't see any arguments. Yeah, I haven't about balls and strikes at all. You know, you're not gonna change the umpire's ways. You're only gonna make things worse. He stays alive with a Foul to the back stop, foul to the extra back netting that they have here at Maple City Park. Bottom of the fifth, this game. Hour and 47 minutes in. That's a little low. <laughs> You saw. Alec, the pitcher there, heading toward his dugout, thought that was strike three. Would be a huge out here. Yeah, base is loaded. Try not to hit the batter either. <laughs> See by the body language from Alec Tesca, pitcher there from St. John's, or St. John Fisher, should say, that he thought that was a strike. Popped out of play. down the third baseline, all the way to the fence. There's strike three. Got to protect that. That was a good pitch. I think he changed his throwing pattern motion there. His side armed a little bit. We go to the six. In life, some surprises are good, and some surprises aren't. You'll be pleasantly surprised by how much cash you could earn with our Kasasa Cashback checking account. With Kasasa Cashback, you could earn 2% cash back on your debit purchases just for using the account. Plus, your ATM fees may be refunded. There's no monthly fee, no minimum balance, and no unpleasant surprises. Call First Heritage or visit us at fhfcu.org to open your Kasasa Cashback checking account today. Some restrictions apply. Yeah. 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 
I'm adding the right fielder, number 22, Jacob Victor. Come on in, we have great deals on great wheels. Coming to Maple City Dodge was huge for me. I got a great deal. I was treated better than family here. I needed a new car in three days and they came through. It's worth the drive to Maple City Dodge because we have the best sales and service and we'll prove it. Thought he'd give you a break that last inning. Beautiful catch. And I obviously had to look through the the netting here for the final out of the top of the sixth by Burdett. That's why you always hustle. I mean, it's a given in sports. I, I 
it just boggles my mind sometimes. Obviously, you know, Robinson Cano comes to mind with the Mets there that he gets ridiculed sometimes from not hustling down first and not hustling this and time. You know, he's already made it and proven that he's a great player, but not a hustler. And there's a base hit. It's exactly why you just run every, you know, just wish whether it be NBA, Major League Baseball, NHL, they all just hustled like you did when you were trying to make the team, you know? It's Callen Johnson up now. That's why I love doing high school sports, college sports, and this obviously collegiate baseball league. Just because you know all these kids, you know, don't want to make mistakes, you know, and it's are trying 110 percent. And you can tell that by, like I said, the Burdett catch in there, and there's the run out by Wimmers. Johnson at the plate. One and two to Johnson. Johnson stays alive. I have a down third base. Line foul. some baseballs after this pitch. We're gonna catch them hustling as they run out there as fast as they can. All the Dodgers run after everything. 100 miles an hour is Johnson. This will stop the double play. As uh, leaving before the pitch. Kevin Higgins. Kevin Higgins, second baseman. Two and all. Oh, 
Broken bat. He's safe at first. Infield hit. Higgins. As you can see, they say they need a medic over here for the bat. They're all checking it out. Spencer Wyand, from, I think he wants to keep it. And, oh, he lets it go. Josh Lorry. Up. So run out, one out, runner on the corners, runners on the corners. As the rain is starting to trickle down again. Dominic Daniels, Brian Dyring, one of the high school baseball coach joining us as well. Good baseball going on here from Maple City Park. Now one out, two runners on the corners. That inside for one and one. Popped out of play. Again, for those parents watching, if you'd like to order a DVD of this game, just go to messaging center on this page, and there's going to be a Base hit. Well, I think it was a base hit, wasn't it? Run scores. I guess it wasn't. I guess he popped out. Did he tag in time? I'm not sure. Let's see. I can watch the replay here. Something didn't look right. I'm adding the right fielder number six, Jack Henry. I'm not sure what that what happened there. I couldn't see if it hit the ground. And then he picked it up and just threw it. And the runner had to freeze because of the line drive. But in any effect, Hornell scores to tie the ball game. It's Jack Henby up. And let's see if the, oh, what happened to all the boys? <laughs> We're reduced to one, but all the stuff is there. Where'd they go? Probably at the, getting a Dodger dog. That's low, two and oh. So what I think happened there is because I couldn't zoom in close enough to see is the ball did hit the ground, but it skimmed right into the glove of the right fielder. and. Enables who, who's, I can't remember who's on first now for the Dodgers. It's Higgins, got back in time. And that's popped up. And that ends the... Sixth inning, Hornell able to gain a run here to tie things up, make it 6-6. Six, six. Go to the seventh. Today's game brought to you by, you just heard it on the PA announcer, the Ryan Agencies, Hornell, Jasper, and Wellsville. Always thanks for your support. Insurance protection you can rely on, the Ryan Agencies. And Remax Hometown so Choice Office at 117 Main Street in Hornell. Reggie can be Martha Marino, household name, call 697 3629. And Triple C's Tasty Freeze. 
Park Drive and Hornell. Stop in for all your favorite flavors of Perry's ice cream. Also get a hot dog, cheeseburger, whatever you want. The best onion rings in town at Triple C's. John and Degg in general trout practice, probably serving the Southern Tier since 1989. Call 324-6690. John and Dagan, Maple City Dodge, Airport Road in North Hornell. Great sales, great service on all Dodge Chrysler Jeeps. Stop in and check out the beautiful used cars they have on the lot at Maple City Dodge. And Mike Palmer, plumbing, heating, air conditioning, coal services, State Route 36 in Cana Steel, 698-4444. Need a plumber, call Palmer, Mike Palmer. Plumbing and heating. Dr. John Wyan, Dr. Joseph McKay at Wyan Chiropractic Associates, 20 Park Drive in Hornell. Get well and stay well with a visit to Wyan Chiropractic, 324-7246. And Connors and Ferris, your workers' comp attorney's office is at Buffalo and Rochester. Proud supporters of the Bills, the Sabres, and your Hornell Dodgers, 585-262-COMP today. Here's the beautiful, it looks like blue skies, but it's actually really cloudy. In fact, I'm getting hit by a little bit of rain. Here. Leading off the seventh for the Oilers, the second baseman, number 10, Ryan Simmons. Simmons. At the plate for the Oilers. A strike. Good. Strike two. <laughs> that one's in the dirt. Two and two, still. There's a strike. Fouled off. There's a base hit. Get it, go get it. Now batting the catcher, number 30, Kevin Mooney. We're now looking for the double play here.
a little high. Three and one. <clears throat> Jim Dubio watching from Wimmer's hometown. Welcome. Two and one. Oh, and hit some. Attention, please. Pinch hitting for the Oilers from St. John Fisher College, number 20, Michael Bimel. So, Michael Bimel from St. John Fisher from St. Mary's, PA. I've been through there a couple times. More than a couple times, actually. Spencer Wyand warming up in the bullpen for Hornell. Why not put one more St. John Fisher College player in the game? St. John Fisher is located in Rochester, New York. Always a powerhouse of a baseball team. Always competing in a College World Series. Not saying always, but you know what I mean. They're always there in the thick of things. Higgins. No runs, one hit. No errors, two men left on eight. After six and a half games of play, on the right AC scoreboard, Rogers six, Oilers six. 
Fans, it's now time for the seventh inning stretch brought to you by the World Alliance Gate. Seventh inning stretch. As people get up and they actually stretch. Urge X. Don't care if I am. If they don't win, it's a shame. Also, number one can miss a shortstop in nine holes for number 20. Fans in YCBL would like to recognize our league-wide sponsors, Ramtex, BSN Sports. Eagle Medical Group, the official sponsor of every NYCBL baseball, and UCU Group, the umpires of the NYCBL. Thanks, Jim. <laughs> I am a one-man show up here. Fans now playing shortstop for the Oilers from Mercyhurst College number one. Dominic it's Sippers. fun. I love what I do. This is my 30th year. I'm not the best announcer in the world. I admit that. I actually looked back. I never used to announce until probably five years ago. I always had hired talented announcers and then I got kind of caught one year not having an out, you know, people couldn't do it. The one guy moved away uh, and just got tough to find good announcers, so I started to do it myself. And I still have color men help me um, with baseball for the Hornell High School games especially. Yeah, this is finishing up my 30th year actually starting in September, my 31st year, we're going back to tele streaming Hornell High School football and soccer games. Yeah, it's it's pretty amazing setup to actually go live. It's keeping the score, announcing, running the camera, trying to look through the viewfinder. That's why I don't always see how plays unfold and that's going to be popped up. Not sure if he sees the ball. Okay, he does finally. I'm batting the center field of the great team. Tucker Holden. See him right there. I forgot it was the bottom of the seventh and forgot to press the button. <laughs> I've caught myself even. Uh, announcing a game and it's been like in the third inning I found out that Hornell was playing a different team that they were playing I just I typed it in the computer but never sent it to the screen so I, as I was looking on the iPad that runs the score it had a certain name that I go oh Hornell's playing this team which they were but on the screen it showed a different name and finally people kept texting who they Hornell's not playing that team so it does get a little Harry sometime as Tucker Holden is up. Oklahoma Wesleyan, he's a sophomore there from Lindsay, Oklahoma. That's why I'm a little late sometimes on the pitch and, pitches and strikes too, as it's two and one. And I wish I, I mean, I, I, my hope is I used to do multi-camera, and obviously with the technology keeps changing, you have to upgrade, and that's a pop-up that's going to be tough for anybody to get to. And I used to do, and this was back 20 years ago, um, three, four camera productions with announcers and everything, and that was in all SD, obviously, before HD came along. Of course, then when you have to get all new equipment, it's a whole new investment, and you know, after that thirty thousand dollar investment, and then throwing it all away, basically, I decided to go scale down a little bit. But now I'm able to do things live, and it was delayed back then. The game would start; it might be halftime, and it might air on Spectrum Cable locally. That one's going to get away, and it's going to be an easy advancement to first. Tucker. But obviously when you 
have multiple cameras, you gotta have multiple people, and it gets to be an expense that a small city like Hornell can't handle. <laughs> so shortstop Matt Martinez. Yeah, he used to have a production truck and everything where all the cables ran in and so if you live in this area, you're able to watch replays on Spectrum Cable. I have my own channel on the Spectrum 1301, as well as my Peich TV YouTube channel, if you type in Peich TV. And you can subscribe to that, and you can watch replays of just about every event I've done in the, over the last six, seven years. A lot of people say, why don't you monetize it and add pe you know, have people pay for it? And I said, I'd just rather just give it, you know, Popped out. Is that going to be another sub? Nope. I've had people send donations to me if you want to do that. <laughs> no, I always feel kind of embarrassed. During the baseball season, I had a couple people send me some checks, and I, just because they appreciate it, and I appreciate it. I said I'm going to maybe make some, have some shirts made up with the logo and stuff, and I'll send it to them. But I'm rambling on, so back to baseball here. So that was an easy play for Noah Weiner. I'm batting the third baseman, number 12. Brendan Lowry. So Lowry's chance here. Break up this tie. goes to Bucknell University, another university that's constantly in the NCAA basketball tournament in the Patriot League. He's safe, and he comes home. Wow, what a change of events here. Good hustle. That's why you can, <laughs> you can even hear Martinez saying he wasn't out. Or no, that wasn't Martinez, I'm sorry. Uh, that was Holden. Okay, Martinez grounded out. So Hornell takes the lead, seven to six. And we're gonna have another visit to the mound. Again, these two teams have been around since the early 1900s, played against each other. The old Pony League, and a lot of major leaguers have come out of this southern tier of New York. And right now, I only know of one that's in the major leagues from Hornell right now, and that's Rajay Davis. Remember, la was it last year or two years ago, Rajay hit for the reverse cycle. He hit a home run, then triple, a double, and then a base hit. And a 
obviously a cycle is a cycle, but it's just kind of neat where you can hit them. And triples, oh, I always tell, I mean, it's a triples got to be the hardest to hit of a cycle. A hit, triples obviously hard, hardest to hit of anything, I think. You know, because obviously the ball's got to is in play, and to be able to hustle your way around to get a triple, it's kind of an amazing feat to me. taken all the way there, which is the right move. Wimmer is able to lay some wood on this usually. I'm gonna back behind this net so I don't get hit. I always got to watch out for the left-handed batters because they can ricochet the ball. A couple games ago, I got hit in the arm. First time I've ever been hit by a baseball, and I'm always in kind of the open zone. Was that strike two? I didn't realize that was a full count. So Wimmers goes down as we go to the eighth. One error and one man left on base. After seven innings of play on the Ryan ABC scoreboard, is a kid fearless, nervous, playful? Yes, yes, yes. Kiwanis is 600,000 kids at heart doing all the little and big things it takes to help children around the world. Because kids need Kiwanis, all of them. Had some comments that said they had some trouble, thought the stream was lost, but it wasn't. We actually can we test the stream the whole time. We watch it from a laptop back through Facebook, so we know that there's no issues, and we haven't had any issues. So if it's anything on your end, usually start and stop Facebook or even your computer sometimes uh, could be an issue. But yeah, we always it's everything's tested here from Mars. In fact, sometimes we. Also have an, an iPhone hooked up too as well, so that's going through a stream, which means it's coming back through Facebook, and there's a strikeout. And we can detect any issues, so it wasn't on our end. And I see other people too com commenting that they did not lose the stream, so it's... But thanks for chiming in like that. I always worry, I like to try to do things, make sure everything's running 110% here. Don't want any issues, and I even feel bad we went on a half an inning late because they moved the game up, and I was in Rochester, and I thought they may cancel the game, so I happened to text the Paul Walker, who runs the Dodgers here, and he said it's been moved up till 6:30. I'm like, <laughs> I got to get on my high horse and drive home as fast as I can to get here. I did not miss that; I actually recorded it, so it'll be replayed. You can watch it on Facebook or on on, on uh, Pice. TV on YouTube. That one's popped up. 
Two outs. Again, this is top of the eighth, so that it's not updating for some reason. There it goes, okay. So two outs. Especially our first year when we were streaming games, it was we had a heck of a problem. And a lot of it was due to, uh, you know, the localities in Verizon. We use a mobile hotspot a lot of places we go now and only use the Wi-Fi where available through the high schools and stuff. But um, now, you know, with everybody streaming, they know the importance of it and have upgraded a lot of the systems throughout the United States, so it really has helped. And we have yet to lose any streams the last year and a half or so. It's been really spot on. In fact, I remember when we first started, even with the high schools, because you're streaming you know, at a high rate that the, the uh, Wi-Fi might kick you off, but they've corrected that in a lot of schools as well. What do they say? Rome wasn't built in a day? Yep. Good. I'd be remiss without saying one of my all-time favorite persons or pe persons in the world, Spencer Wyan, is on the mound. St. John Fisher. Had the pleasure of coaching him in youth sports. Youth basketball. Oh, that was it. He comes in for that short period. I think he wanted to stay out there a little longer. I'm surprised. I'm not sure why, but why they would take him out in this situation with a full count. I'll have to ask his parents why that hey, happens. Please, now pitching for the Dodgers from Oklahoma Wesleyan University, number 15, Austin Burke. Hmm. I saw you warming up, Spencer, and then I forgot they might put you in and didn't even notice it as I'm... <laughs> Announcing that in top of the eighth. Let's go back. That, that is strange. I don't not sure why they would pull him out. Maybe they're limiting his pitches, but he's full count with two outs already. players say strategy and you know, that's I guess that's why they did it. You see Spencer Wyan jumping up and down. You know maybe they thought you know he was gonna throw a ball but right down the middle. Wow. So we go to the bottom of the eighth. Cornell up seven to six. Again, if you're from Hornell and watching this game, don't forget Father's Day car show up at the Canicadia Park tomorrow starting at 9 a.m. One dollar admission. Just 200 cars will be on display as, as long as the rain holds out. And it's, like I said, looking at the forecast, it's actually supposed to rain tonight now and be better tomorrow. So hopefully we'll be able to get that in. It's rain or shine, so it doesn't matter. We'll be there. Thank you. 
Shout out to Dale Vance. At home watching this on his laptop. Debbie Crosby got me a, a well-needed Gatorade. <laughs> Leading off the eight, Gordon oh, Rogers, the designated hitter number seven, Colin Johnson. So Colin Johnson up. Tagged him out. Hope he's all right. Hate when they uh, oh, come up a little lame. That's why you got to be careful. Trying to beat things out, dodge the tag or whatever. You can see. Yeah, I watched the replay of it there, and he tries to dodge the tag and you know just run the. You're going to get yourself hurt, and you can see him limping off still. I mean, it's not your, you know, obviously it's easy, easier said than done. Base hits. Your attention, please. Pinch hitting for the Dodgers from Hanover College, number 11, Andrew Littlefield. So, Andrew Littlefield, pinch hitting. Littlefield pops out to short. So Jack Henby.
Late on that one for strike one. And the unassisted for the out. It's going to take us to the ninth. Last and chance, last chance for the Oilers. Thank our advertisers. Airtight of New York.com, 368 2842. Thanks a lot, as always. Pulos and Roselle, attorneys at law. Tim Roselle, Bill Pulos. Elderwood at Hornell 1 Bethesda Drive. Thank you very much for your support. Rustic Lux, 320 Cannon Steel Street. Free loved furniture in showroom. Gilio's Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling, 3820836. The Ryan Agencies in Broadway Mall in Hornell. And Wellsville and Jasper as well. Remax Hometown Choice, 117 Main Street in Hornell. Your attention, please. Now pitching for the Niners. Triple C's Tasty Freeze. Number 22. All your favorite flavors of soft and hard ice cream. John and Dagan, General and Trial Practice. 324-6690. Maple Andrew City Dodge Field. Airport Road. Great sales, great service. And all Dodge Chrysler Jeep. Mike Palmer Plumbing and Heating. Air Conditioning Coal Services. Y and Kyle Practic Associates, 20 Park Drive in Hornell. Counters and Ferris here, Workers' Comp Attorneys, offices in Buffalo and Rochester. First Heritage Federal Credit Union. More than just checking in savings. Airtight of New York. Again, thank you. Poulos Roselle quickly there. So top of the ninth we go. Last chance for the Oilers as Hornell clinging to that seven to six. Again, six round. I'm gonna give you a quick shot of the scoreboard. Give you an idea how this game is gone. As you can see, oh, it's not in focus that well. I don't know why. <laughs> As you can see, scoring has come in droves, but kind of in a drought. It's four straight innings, scoreless innings by the Oilers. Attention, please. Pinch hitting for the Oilers from Herkimer County Community College, number 55, Frank Wayman. Good. Yeah. 
J.P. Nolan on the mound for Hornell. There's strike three. So Dodgers down to their last two batters. Now batting the second base, number 10, Ryan Simmons. Higgins. Now batting the third base, number 43, base in the Dolby. Dirt. Go, get it. Fair ball. So a runner in scoring, but tying run it. Second now. Strike. J.P. Nolan on the mound. One strike away from putting the Oilers in the books here on a Saturday night. Outside. Two and two. Dirt. Yeah. Tell him to eat that one so he doesn't throw it. You can hear the. Full count.
Is he set him up for the fastball here? the ball game up. Ugh. So unfortunate. Two out, two strike hit. Uh, it ties things up. Dodger, Do Olean was down to their last strike two times and has since scored two runs. Wow, talk about a turn of events here. Save here. So the Dodgers were all cheering a few minutes ago. Now only hands cheering. The good thing is I won't be here all night because, well, even if Dodgers do come back and tie it up, it only goes 10 innings no matter what. It can end in a tie. This game already just surpassing three hours long. Eat. 
There's strike three. You can see Nolan's not too happy with himself, but you can't worry about it. Like I said, this game always changes. Go to the bottom of the ninth. These are cool. Did you, um, what did you? So Brody Burdett up as the rain has come back a little bit. So 2-0 to Burdett. Good eye. Here is patience as a key. Because if you can get on a walk, it's just as good as a hit here. Obviously, that's not always the case, but here it is. It's got to get base runners on here if you have any chance of at least tying, if not winning this game. I'm sure he'll be taken here. Well, maybe not. Base hits! He, I think he knew what he was throwing. I mean, that was... He knew that was perfect, an off-speed pitch that time, and able to, again, between the, between third and short, just a perfect placement. Another change of pitcher here. Gonna catch, see if he can warm up here. I'm gonna take a little break here. So this one time, if you can start it, bro. Thanks. John Michael. Yeah, I've got a first. I've got a first. Your attention, please. Who's on first? Now pitching for the Oilers from Columbia University, number 63, Nate Bimel. Your attention, please. Pitch running for the Dodgers at first base from Kansas State University, number 26, Chris Hurd. So 
run on first, nobody out here. Dodgers down by one in the bottom of the ninth. Runner goes. No attempt. Shortstop Matt Martinez is number two. Fly deep would tie this up for a base hit or whatever you want to. Number of things here. Dodgers tie it up. Nobody better, 12. Let's go, Brandon. So Lowry. One out. One run home. Runner on second. Two and oh. It's in the dirt. 
Over to third. <laughs> Three and oh. Intentional walk. They want you threes, let's go. They want you Nick. Come on, Nick. So Nick Wimmers with a chance. You get him up, it's more than a chance. Do they walk him? So there's a force out at every... Because he's a threat. Let's see what they're deciding to do and they're gonna intentionally walk him. That's, a good move by the only in coach. And then it also makes bases loaded so the air, any kind of slip up by the. Colin Johnson. Oh, if he just doesn't have it pitching, what I was getting at for. Throws balls here. He's gonna walk the winning run home. Swings through that one. I'm surprised he's not taken all the way here. Let him throw strikes as the infield, as you can see, is in for a play at the plate. Got to stay out of the double play, obviously. Is that a strike or the offer? I'm, I, Modified Nobody Nobody Good. Stay alive. That's first here in his credit union 50 center. Strike three, can't be taken there. That was a pitch served up perfectly for a hit there. Unfortunate. So Higgins up. Swing that bat on that particular. Well, I, I, here I'm, I can't have it both ways. I'm saying take the, let the pitcher throw the first strike, and he did right there. So, that is, you can see that one coming in. Could see a hit batsman here. Wouldn't that be funny? Shot foul. So, bases loaded. Still down to their. Last strike, not down to the last strike, we've tied things up, but see the waving the flag out there. Saturday's made for the boys. <laughs> boys of summer. Staying alive. And strike three. We go to the tenth. So some golden opportunity for Hornell. Of 
golden opportunity that time. Unfortunate. <laughs> uh, so last at bats for both, unless this will be the first time. If, if it ends up after this inning, like I said, nobody scores this inning. It's a tie, and both teams will get a point for the tie. Winner gets two points, obviously, if it, one team comes away with a win. Your attention, please. Now playing first base for the Dodgers from McMurray University, number 23, John Michael Aiello. Are your children in the right car seat for their age and size? It may be too late to check when you're on the road. Fortunately, you're on the couch. Don't think you know. Know you know. Noah Weimer. Still on the mound for the Dodgers. Hustles over there for the out. Now batting the right field number 22, Jacob Victor. Strike three, two outs. Come 
two and two. Strike three. So at a minimum, Dodgers pick up a point. Please, let's win a ball game. <laughs> Bottom of the tenth. Go ones. Leading off the tenth for the Dodgers. The center fielder, number eleven, Andrew Littlefield. So Andrew Littlefield leads things off here. Swings through that fastball. Sorry, that's my umbrella hitting the, my headset. Jack Henby. I'm betting the right fielder, number six, Jack Henby. If you just join us, this is the final inning. It, if the game ends at a tie, they both get one point, and the game is over. There's no more than 10 innings being played. Come on, baby. Let's go, Jack. Let's go, 
Only the wind. <laughs> has made an appearance. Can wind make an appearance? I guess if it's, oh geez, my umbrella's being blown all over the place. I guess if it stirs up dust, I could say the wind caused that. One to Henby. Fouls one off. Two and two. I don't lose you here. My camera <laughs> is flashing battery. No, it doesn't matter. Oh, it doesn't matter, but I apologize if we happen to lose you <laughs> all this way. And be fouls. Unfortunately, there's nothing I can do. There's no electric up where I am. I didn't expect the game to go this long. Like I said, we're three and a half hours. I didn't realize the camera was going dead here, but it's still, hopefully we're still alive. happen to die here on you. I will text you the <laughs> Facebook the final score. Never had this happen. I've never had a game this long in anything, so and you can't change batteries unfortunately. Because It'll cut the stream anyway. It'll cut the stream off. And they don't make anything else. And en be still staying alive here.
Remember, if this game ends here with an out, it, it actually, the game does end. It's a tie, and both teams will get one point. If you get a win, you get two. Oh, boy. This, I may lose you here as the camera's flashing even faster, <laughs> which means it's dying. I'm going to have to put, run some kind of electric here somehow. Not now, tonight, obviously, but for the next game. But unfortunately, you can't drill into the stadium. If anyone touches or drills, trying to drill anything to the stadium, they've got to tear it down, which is a strange thing, but because it's so old. Oh, come on. There's strike three, it's the end of the game. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left on base. So that's your final eight to eight. Your final score. Thanks for joining us. Another